He's begging for the ball. I said, great. You know, just knowing that uh, I can move on the floor, I can do whatever I like on the floor without pain. So I'm excited about this season. Elijah Wan is taking the game over. Next, Houston travels to Dallas, where the Rockets receive balanced scoring en route to an eight-point victory over the Mavericks. Here he comes on the head down triple all the way to the hoop. Here goes Drexler again. This time it's good and a foul. Charles Barkley and Matt Maloney keep the win from downtown. Barkley under the gun for three and he hits it. Charles Barkley. Ellie leaves it for Maloney and Matt Maloney has it stuck on automatic. Carl Malone and the Utah Jazz invaded New York to take on John Starks and the Knicks. New York dominated early on, building a 17-point lead. Oh, Starks! Ah, but the mailman was delivering. Malone, who finished with 30 points, got Utah back into the game. Great pass. And Stockton with a finish. And Utah took a one-point lead when Brian Russell scored with just 12 seconds left in the game. Utah takes the lead. Still, New York had a chance to win it. But when Allen Houston made just one of two free throws, the game went into overtime. After one extra period, it was still tied. But in the second overtime, Utah flexed their muscles and rolled to their 50th win of the year. And now Russell for three. Brian Russell with another three-point shot. The Utah Jazz will claim a road victory in double overtime. They beat the Knicks 124 to 119. Now we go back into the action, this time in the Pacific Division, with the Lakers, who won 10 of their last 11 games. Shaquille O'Neal has the Los Angeles Lakers once again playing some great basketball. At home against the Suns, Shaq tore through the Phoenix defense, scoring 33 points and grabbing 22 rebounds. Shaq just couldn't be stopped. Basket count, foul, and it's Next, George Carl brought his Pacific Division leading Seattle Sonics and their five game winning streak into LA. The Lakers won it by 13 points and in the process went to a season high 28 games over 500. Don't do it to him like that, Shaq. Two nights later, Nick Van Exel, who's been enjoying his recent role off the bench, helped the Lakers to a three point win after they trailed by 14 points. Oh, oh boy, that's impressive. Van Exel to Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of potential in the team. We have a lot of talent defensively as well. You know, everybody talks about the offense, but we have a lot of athletes. And we show that if we follow our game plan and execute and focus on it, you know, we can do a lot of great things. With their great play of late, the L.A. Lakers are now just two games behind the Seattle Sonics and Utah Jazz in the Western Conference playoff standings. The San Antonio Spurs are in the fourth spot, four and a half games in back of the leaders, while the Phoenix Suns are in the fifth position. The Portland Trailblazers are in sixth, followed by the Houston Rockets and Minnesota Timberwolves. The Sacramento Kings are in ninth and appear to be out of the Western Conference playoff picture. Time to log on to NBA.com for some news about some stars returning from injuries. Patrick Ewing, who had wrist surgery, is hopeful he'll return to the Knicks in time for the playoffs. My goal is to definitely come back for the playoffs. Um, I was hoping that I would cut come back during the season but according to the doctors that's not realistic hopefully he can come back and, and be at the level that he was at you know before he left so uh we, that's what we're counting on right now Nets coach john calipari had reason to smile his team added three key players ronnie cycling returned from a foot injury while keith van horn and jason williams made their comeback in a win over the magic Kendall Gill, the pump pick around the outlaw, gives it up for the chance of Williams. Jones. Having guys back today is, is good for us. It's a big plus for us um, because we've been having guys injured all year, and this game will hopefully help us on the stretch, you know, in our playoff chances. Next, a star who's played for 15 seasons announced his plans to retire. Clyde Drexler will call it quits after the season to coach the school he attended from 1980 to 1983, the University of Houston. And I'm extremely honored to take the challenge to be the head coach at the University of Houston. I think this is a unique opportunity uh, to try and follow in the footsteps of the wonderful coaches in the past. Now, let's check out a pair of players who reached memorable milestones. Indiana's Mark Jackson passed Maurice Cheeks for fifth place in career assists. 
while Utah's Carl Malone moved into fifth place on the all-time scoring list. The mailman passed former Washington Bullets legend Alvin Hay. There it is. He's the fifth leading scorer in the history of the NBA. Carl Malone is now with 27,314 in his great career. And finally, the NBA announced its Player of the Week. Shaquille O'Neal, who was Player of the Month for January, won this week's honor. Shaq led the Lakers to a 3-1 record while averaging 28 points and 14 rebounds a game. Now O'Neal muscling his way in. Shaq Daddy was the jam. O'Neal hit 52% of his shots from the field. He went into Shaq's slam dunk. Pass the count. Let's go into the hole by Shaq. Now it's time for our viewer email. Alan Pablico from Cala Ocon City in the Philippines wants to know if Michael Jordan's ever worn a number other than 23 or 45. Michael's wore number 23 most of his NBA career, but he wore number 45 when he came out of retirement in 1995. But these aren't the only two numbers MJ's worn. He wore number 12 in a February 1990 game because his regular jersey was missing. Michael finished the game with 49 points. Coming up next, we'll take you into the action in the East, where MJ and the Bulls battle the Raptors in a thriller in Toronto. Then, you'll see why Rex Chapman was a real hot shot against the Sonics. Chapman with a long three. Yes! 